We are starting Tuesday, December 18, 2018. Yeah. I'd like to uh, request that Dr. Huff does the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Honor and life. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dr. Huff, I had a flashback in elementary school. We were all begging to, to lead the Pledge of Allegiance, and then somebody else is the hall monitor. Upstate him. Be the hall monitor now and control the bathroom passes. <laughs> like to have a roll call, please. President Muncie. Here. Vice President Mays. Here. Director Graham. Here. Director Huff. Here. Director Statham. Here. Is public comment item number two? Do I have any? Oh, approval I believe we have approval. Approval agenda. I'm sorry. So moved. Second. We'll call vote, please. Director Statham. Yes. President Muncie. Yes. Director Huff. Yes. Vice President Mays. Yes. Director Graham. Yes. We'll have public comment. This is an opportunity for members of the public to address the board on matters within the board's jurisdiction that are not listed on the agenda. Please limit the comments to three minutes or less. State law prohibits the board of directors from discussing or taking action on items not included on the agenda. I have one public speaking card, but it's uh, for the SUCID. Are there any members of the public who would like to speak? Go to the podium and state your name. Town of Residence. Valerie Driscoll, Yucca Valley. Um, I'm going to try to be three minutes. A few months ago, I came to a meeting here and asked how long must we as residents endure our driving on a rutted, rocky dirt road on their street. Samantha said 60 days, but that was not true. Nor do any permits state as such, and no one seems to monitor the construction. We endured 70 days before finally being paved, and out of those, only four actual days of construction was on our street. I asked the town manager and Mr. Yakinow if he monitored the progress, and he said, don't you get those door hangers? <laughs> Why, yes. In fact, there, here's one that indicates a nine-day window of disruption, yet the construction didn't even start for two days after the last date on this door hanger. I had to ask some trucks to move as I couldn't leave my house on the second day after that. And it was 3.30 in the afternoon. I wasn't able to leave all day. So it wasn't even according to this door hanger, nine day window. The day we were finally paved was our weekly trash pickup day. Yet Suka neglected to inform Burtek to make other arrangements. We did get trash pickup the next day, but the recyclables were commingled with the regular trash. Also, the maps that are emailed are not accurate either, and the response from Samantha is, well, that is what is given to us. Finally, my car was damaged driving over Yucca Trail one day when there were some major potholes there, and all of a sudden my steering wheel started to shake really bad. So when I went to the, um, I tried to get in on a Monday, and they were too busy, and then on Tuesday I got into Big O Tires, but Somebody from MWH came over and started declaring, this is not our fault, this is, has nothing to do with it, she already had this problem, blah, blah, blah. So I tried to get Samantha involved. She said, no, we're just gonna go along with everybody. And then they wanted to charge me over $350 for another alignment, plus fix the tire that got damaged. So the next day, the road was finally open to discount tires where I normally go, and because I had just had a, an alignment done there, 
they did a complementary alignment and replaced the tire. But um, like I said, I tried to get um, Samantha involved from High Desert Water District and um, she didn't want to help at all. And then I finally went to the corporate office of Sukit and I said, I have photos and receipts. And then finally I got some action and I'm not allowed to say anything beyond that point because they made me sign a disclaimer. Thank you very much. Just gonna thank you for coming in front of the board and telling us we appreciate you doing that. Item number three is department items. 3A is the 2017 comprehensive annual financial report to CAFR. Information, this item is for information only. Jonathan Abesco, audit manager of Fedic and Brown LLP, district staff to present the information on 17, 18, financial report. Yes, uh, good evening, President Muncy, members of the board, staff, and members of the public. Each year, um, the district engages an outside auditing firm to review the financial condition um, of the district in accordance with generally accepted auditing standards and um, requirements of special dis districts and OMB Circular A128. We did engage uh, FedEx and Brown, certified public accountants, and the attached financial statements, um, in their words, present fairly in all material respects the represented, uh, respective financial position, position of the district as of June 30th, 2018, and the respective changes in net position and where, where applicable cash flows thereof for the year then ended in accordance with um, accounting principles and generally accepted uh, accounting principles in the United States. Uh, Jonathan Abadesco from FedEx and Brown will present a short uh, PowerPoint a presentation for the board. Thank you. Be happy to answer any questions following public comment. Yeah, members of the board, uh, management, uh, public members, uh, we're here to, we're here to present the uh, district uh, financial statements for 2018, and and I would like to thank um, Mr. Bob Statum and um, Mr. Mace about yeah f uh, during the finance committee meeting where they drilled down the statements to make sure that. It's a much better uh, presentation overall, okay? So here's the uh, audit team that we have for the year. So state law requires that the district have a qualified a CPA to perform the audit each year. Um, the state um, report or the controls office report will be submitted by January 31st. <laughs> Um, our audit or the annual audit with the district is to determine whether the statements are free of uh, misstatements and if it is prepared in accordance with GAP. Um, our audit process is governed by ASCPA and uh, federal and state requirements. GAP is established by um, Governmental Accounting Standards Board. So on your packet, you have um, the financial report and the management report. So overall, um, we did not identify any material weakness within the district's um, control structure. On your management report, um, we indicated there the following bullet points. Um, we, or the district, um, implemented um, GAS B75 or OPEB, other post-employment benefits, uh, which is the retiree um, health benefits. So management judgments, um, we mentioned there that um, there's some accounting estimates such as um, depreciation, OPEB, and pension liability. Um, there were no uh, uncorrected misstatements. We did not consult with other accountants. There were no difficulties encountered, and there were no disagreements with management. As um, um, yeah, Tom um, said a while ago, uh, we should uh, clean opinion. Uh, what's new, um, as I said, um, it's gas B75, which was um, implemented by the district um, as, as of uh, 2018. As a result, um, there was a restatement of the beginning net position or equity in the amount of three million and um, OPEB liability was recorded for four million dollars in your liability, okay? So here's the uh, statements which is found on 14 and 15 of the packet that you have. 
And I was just enumerate um, the big changes over the year. So your total net position um, increased by 500,000, 500, uh, which comprise of um, increase in operations of 3.6 million, where um, it was offset by uh, a decrease f from a prior period adjustment of 3.1 million due to the implementation of um, gas B75 for OPEB. So your total revenues went up by um, 1.4 million um, as, a, as a result of uh, operating revenue, which increased by um, 189,000 due to water sales and offset by um, a decrease in readiness uh, to serve fees. Um, your non-operating revenue increased by um, 1.8 million due to the increase in, in your Measure Z sales tax revenue of 1.7 million. Total expenses um, increased by 2.5 million um, as a result of um, operating expenses increasing by 2.5 million due to uh, g and expenses of uh, 1.2 million, pumping and water treatment of um, 431,000, source of supply of uh, 400,000, Transmission and distribution of 340,000 and customer accounts um, costs of uh, 104,000. So, lastly, your non operating expenses uh, decreased by 5,000 bucks, primarily due to a decrease in your interest expenses of 12,000, which was offset by lease payment related to your Morongo Basin project. So, that concludes my um, presentation. So, do you have any questions? Yeah, uh, with the draft. Is there any questions from the board member? And then I'll ask if there's any public comment. Okay, is there any public comment on this item? Simply, uh, this item is for information only. Correct. Oh, Saran, did you have a question? I just, I just want to acknowledge. Uh, to committee members, Director Statham and Vice President Mays for being very diligent and getting it all straightened out before it came to us. Any other director's comments? Would you like to uh, explain to the to the board about the uh, experience that that uh, you had that he had down in the other one where they paid it off, and then they had the uh, lack of finances. Uh, later on when they really, really needed it. Was that OPEB? Was OPEB. OPEB? Yeah, OPEB. Is it an OPEB? Um, Tom or, or... Uh, no, I... Yeah, I think Tom can do it. Thank you. Yeah, um, the previous water district that I worked for, they had made a decision to pay down some of that OPEB liability that they, had, they saw coming um, and reduced their reserves as a result. And then the following year, just due to changes in the way the actuarial numbers were calculated, their, um, they had an additional liability the following year. I mean, granted, it was less than had they not paid it off, but still uh, the board there kind of concluded it was really difficult to get ahead of that. And then, in fact, as Director Mays pointed out, there was a, um, a catastrophic event up there, and they really needed those reserves, and they de depleted it quite a bit by making that decision. And they, in hindsight, they wish they had not. So again, it's something that we should talk about when we uh, go through the reserve conversation. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, I'd like to commend uh, Tom, Tanya, and staff for earning this uh, clean report. Um, I think the auditor is uh, reflecting the good work that our staff uh, continues to do and has been doing. We've gotten a District of Distinction Award for, what, 11 years now in a row? Quite a while. And deservedly so, the good work. So congratulations and keep up the good work. Director Huff, do you have any comments? No, thank you. I have one, and I think the most, one of the most important documents is on page nine, which is the Certificate of Achievement and Excellent Financial Reporting that we had last year that Director Statham just mentioned and the good work that our staff continues to do. But I do have one more question for you. 
Was there any uh, changes in our reporting that FEDAC would recommend in the future? Um, actually, so far, um, if you would compare this report with other districts report, this is um, above average in terms of being um, compliant with um, all the GAFR requirements, um, GFOA requirements, um, even GASB requirements. Uh, we uh, clearly made sure that all are in accordance with their requirements. And um, we, um, there were some uh, notes by GFOA that uh, we have addressed, and all of those are incorporated in the report. So in terms of suggestions, um, I would say um, just keep up the good work. And uh, with the leadership of uh, Ed, um, and it boils down to Tom and to all the staff, I think uh, you, you guys did a great job. You know, one thing I'd like to add, though, too, that post-employment retirement benefits, our current employees do not get any retirement insurance. So years down the road, that number will go to zero since we eliminated retirement health benefits. <clears throat> and one other thing, I think the staff report, I think what we meant to ask if there were no issues was to receive and file the audit and change it from a draft to a final. And then we would need board approval to receive and file it. Any further comments from staff, board members? I'd like to make the motion to uh, receive and file the uh, audit for 2017-18. Second. Okay, we have a first from Director Statham, a second from Saran. Roll call vote, please. President Muncie. Yes. Vice President Mays. Yes. Director Statham. Yes. Director Huff. Yes. Director Graham. I'm going to interrupt because based on the staff report that was posted in the agenda, it just says for information only. There's no discussion about a motion being made to approve the report. So therefore, uh, we can't move a motion to receive and file the report because it wasn't placed on the agenda. <coughs> so we'll have to bring it back on another time. So do we need a motion to... There was no no action taken, no action. so we'll just disregard the previous one. It would be br brought on as a separate agenda item to receive, receive and file. And file. We don't need a motion to renege the last vote. We can just... Yeah, right. it doesn't. It's not valid. Okay, we'll look forward to seeing it in a future agenda item. <laughs> <laughs> item number three is environmental support services for phases two and three. Staff is recommending that the Board of Directors authorize the general manager to enter into an agreement with Jericho Systems in the amount of $74,510 to provide environmental support services for phase two and three of the wastewater reclamation project. Good evening, Mr. President, members of the board, staff, members of the public. Uh, we did our initial CEQA study back in 2009, and since then we've had some realignments in phases two and three. As part of Prop 1, Mojave Water Agency, we work with them as part of our integrated plan. It's working with the rest of the Colorado region. And I believe we've been awarded approximately $135,000 for this type of work. <clears throat> so we went out and we got a proposal from Jericho. We also contacted Tom Dotson, who did the initial study, and he was not interested in proposing, and also Jacob Engineering. So we only did get one proposal and this will be covered by a grant. So staff is recommending that the board of directors authorize the general manager to enter into an agreement with Jericho Systems in the amount of $74,510 to provide environmental support services for phases two and three of the wastewater project. I'd be happy to answer any questions following public comment. Is there any comment from the public? None, back to the directors. Like a motion that we go with staff's recommendation on the environmental support services for phase two and three. Second. The first and second roll call. Director Graham. Yes. Vice President Mays. Yes. Director Huff. Yes. Director Statham. Yes. President Muncie. Yes. Quick question on that item, Ed. Uh, why, why do you think that nobody else wanted to bid on that project? You know, uh, Tom, Do Tom Dotson, it's like he's retired, then he's out of retirement. He's going back and forth. And since Jericho is currently doing some work for us, maybe Jacob just determined they may not be cost effective, you know, or the size was not big enough for them. I really don't. 
my best guess of why they did. Member Forrester Directors reports and comments for information purposes only on subjects not covered by the agenda and no action to be taken. Director Graham. Sure. Well, first of all, uh, I was sorry to hear that one of our citizens uh, had an unpleasant experience with the sewer construction. It's sad to hear because we, we've just been very pleased with how things have been going along and how well the communication has been, and I'm sorry to hear that somehow communication uh, slipped a little bit. So I hope you'll forgive us on that, and I hope everything worked out well for you. Um, the other thing is, I would just like to mention, and I think all the board members have heard already, that Don Rao is now our new board of supervisor. Uh, how exciting it is for, the, yes. for Yucca Valley to have a congressman an assemblyman and now a board of supervisor. I mean, how much better can it get? And a new president of our board and a new mayor in town. So, geez, what a way to end up the year, right? Um, One of us should run for the United Nations. <laughs> well, there you go. Miss State Senator. The other thing I'd just like to make a comment about, our board has now gone through two election cycles and all five board members have been um, privileged to go through the election cycle without having to run a campaign. And I was talking with Kathy Tiggs, who's the former president of Aqua, and I said, does Aqua have any records stating how many water districts in the state of California might have had all five of their board members gone through two election cycles? He says, well, I never heard of that before. Maybe you need to check or write an article. So, and also with CSDA, because all of our board members have gone through a variety of workshops through the uh, Special Districts Association, leadership workshops, um, how to be better board members, and so forth. And I have to say, my personal belief, I think all of that experience that we've all gone through and continue to go through, I mean, it just doesn't stop by going to one of the workshops. Uh, we all seem to continue to find other workshops that we think that are going to make us more valuable to our community and, um, and continue to do so. And I think that all of that pays off, and it's shown that our board is an exceptional working board uh, with all the five members, having great respect for one another's opinions and uh, how we proceed on the needs for our community and working with staff to see that those needs are met. So I'm going to end up the year feeling extremely pleased with the direction we're taking and how well we're all doing. And with that, I'll just wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Vice President Mays. I uh, <laughs> want to say thanks to the staff. It was a joy to be at the Christmas party last week. Um, we have a fine, fine staff here and at the other location in all of the different levels and uh, they work together as well and um, they encourage each other they support each other and we're very very proud as a board for each one of you uh, and Ed your leadership and each one of those that are underneath you I give kudos to each one and our community seems to give thanks as well for a lot of different things and uh, so I'm, I'm very appreciative and I, too, want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and look forward to a new year with great uh, achievements coming along in the new year. Thank you. Dr. Ruff? I, I attended Mojave uh, last week, but I think I'll postpone that to articles and talk about that till the next election. Again, this has been a really fun year. I appreciate all you guys tremendously. And you know, because I'm on the ocean side HOA board, you don't know how much I appreciate all of you. <laughs> so, uh, again, and the staff, so uh, please have a really nice Christmas season. Thank you. Last but not least, Director Staten. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I uh, have no report, but I, I do have a comment. And I, I'll start it with something that's sort of personal, but also general. Um, it's been my observation that when I'm feeling energetic, 
I'm, I'm happier, I'm more productive, uh, I work better with others, I'm less grouchy. Um, there's a lot to be said for positive energy. And I'd like to encourage um, staff to consider some kind of positive energy uh, New Year's resolution that we look after each other to maintain a high positive energy level for all employees. I think we'll have less um, sickness, uh, less potential accidents, uh, more positive uh, customer interactions with uh, staff members that are feeling very uh, energetic and are not stressed or tired. So I want to wish everyone a very wonderful holiday and a very energetic new year. I want to make one comment, if I may. I have, I have known you since I moved to Yucca Valley, I believe. You're one, you and Wanda were probably two of the first people that I met up here. And all those years, I've never been around you or never heard you being grouchy. You haven't missed much. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Adams, I wanted to thank Ed for your leadership this year and Jennifer for doing a very wonderful job with the public outreach. Um, this is the first comment we've had negative that's come in front of the board on the sewer, and we, we take these comments very serious. Your school, thank you for coming in front of us. And after the meeting, I'll take a minute. I'd like to learn a little bit more. Jennifer, you've just done a wonderful job, you and, and the staff, keeping the town informed with the billboards and, and making sure the radio and the news have the right. Um, information and I know we're not going to be perfect because well honestly if you're perfect we probably couldn't afford to keep you <clears throat> I don't know how Jeff does it but thank you so much for your time and Tony thank you for your leadership in the operations it's really exciting everything that's happened if we, if we did a, a year-end review the amount of pipe that you've put in the ground well frankly I just sat through a staff meeting yesterday at the city of San Bernardino and the city of San Bernardino water district was there and over the last five years they've put 20 miles 20 miles and when you compare the sizes and the amount of pipe that is, you guys are just so far out ahead of, of where anybody else is, literally in California, if not the <coughs> so Thank you for keeping up that good work. And Kaylee, you uh, are an excellent communicator, really just kept this board informed and up to date. And it's been really great to have you here this year. And Tom? Um, it's been a blessing to have you and thank you so much for the hard work that you put towards the financial reporting and I know you've got some really really exceptional staff please thank them for us this district sometimes feels like it's on autopilot and sometimes we feel that we're up here and well, honestly it's almost like we're in the clouds looking down at, at, at Eden and Ed, that's, that's some a lot of that's your leadership but it also is how good our staff is so thank you, and I want to encourage you guys to keep up the good work. I can't wait to see what we're going to do next year. Speaking of this year, Saran Graham has been our board president uh, twice. Well, four times, I guess, from 2010 to 12 and 2018. And, and you recently made a statement that uh, you've received plaques in the past. and You appreciate the recognition, but you would rather have a donation towards a service organization. So I do have a plaque here uh, recognizing Sir I'm use this microphone here and then I'll ask you to come down with the board and I'll ask somebody to get a picture to put it on the direct uh, on our website or our Facebook social media but this this says High Desert Water District gratefully acknowledges Saran Graham for service as a board president in 2010 through 12 and 2018 in lieu of a plaque the High Desert Water District will donate $50 to the Boys and Girls Club of High Desert you would join me down in front, please.
Special Olympics. Item number five is manager's reports for information only on subjects not covered by the agenda. No ad action is taken. Looks like uh, CFO Tom Schill. I have nothing other to report other than, um, again, I thank you for, for all the support that uh, you've given us. And we certainly do have a great staff. And I wanted to wish each of you a very Merry Christmas and a very and most blessed New Year. Communications and Legislative Officer Jennifer Pullen. I just want to mention that I think the upcoming year next year is going to be one for the record books and I'm excited to be a part of it and I'm glad that everyone here is as well. Board Secretary Community Outreach Coordinator Kaylee Frey. Good evening. I have nothing further to report. And Director of Water Operations Tony Culver. I did owe that. General Manager Ed Music. Good evening. Um, I received an email today from David Elenez. He works for the Department of Public Health Division of Environmental Health Services. And he says that mental physics wants to connect to a public water system. And even though they are within Joshua Basin's service area, we are much closer to them as far as having a water line. So he has talked to LAFCO about annexing into our service area and I just told them that you know they'd have to pay the appropriate fees and then it would have to be approved by our board but uh, I guess they're having some nitrate issues with their water so they'd like to connect to a public water system that would be our district back to so I'll keep you informed as this moves along and I can't believe how fast 2018 went by. It seems like it's 2017, and a year from now, our sewer plant will be up and running, and we'll have probably 1,000 connections. And it's a wonderful district, and we have, we're very fortunate. We have a great board, and we have great staff, and a lot of things are getting done. So I'd like to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, and especially to all the employees of High Desert Water District, because they're the ones that are doing all the work to making us work. Yeah, Ed, uh, I'm, I'm guessing that LAFCO will pretty much work with our staff as they're evaluating with the... Yeah, I would, I'm, you know, I'm leaving it up to this, David, to take the lead. I just told them that, you know, we have, right now, I think we have a $787 annexation fee per acre. And, you know, whatever cost that they would have to incur, but said, and then it requires our board approval. So probably what I'll do at the next agenda item... I'll bring it to the board just to see if they want us to move forward with this. But this was just part of my comments to let you know uh, currently what's going on. And is there any update on uh, the Pioneer Town special districts? Uh, no, we're going to have a meeting. Um, we're we're still we're. Um, I've got to put together an invoice for all of the staff time. It's been now like four or five years that they're going to reimburse us. But other than that, no, I don't think they have a start date at this point. I know they're awarding the contract, I believe, to Sukit, but I don't think they have a start date right now. If I could make a brief comment on that, at the um, pipeline, no, um, yeah, pipeline commission meeting uh, two weeks ago. Um, representative from the county um, indicated that uh, um, he expected to be under construction within the next six months. Item number six is future agenda items requested by the board. Any board member would like to request an agenda item? I have one. Uh, one of the things that I found helpful in one of the cities that I serve as a fire chief is they, they have a spreadsheet of agenda items with dates. So you can look in advance and you have an idea of when an agenda may be coming, agenda item may be coming up. Would that be possible to start developing out for the board members? So it, it I think it would allow us to prepare for agenda items instead of waiting 
you know, four or five days before the meeting, but to see what's coming up and have a better idea of, of progressing. We can work on that. Yes. Okay. And with that, number seven is adjournment. Thank you.